Hey everybody, Charles for HumbleMechanic.com. Today, we're gonna to be cleaning the piston tops, cylinder bores, and block deck on the white Wookie. All right, so it may come as no surprise that a car with 140,000 miles on it that had a bit of a leaking head gasket may also have some other concerns. After pulling the cylinder head off, I found that the tops of the pistons are covered in carbon buildup, as well as in the cylinder where the combustion chamber actually is, has a lot of carbon in it. And we need to get all of that off in order to prevent any kind of hot spotting when we go back together with the engine. In addition to that, before we put a new head gasket on, heck, before we even check the block deck for straightness, we need to clean that surface so that we're not putting a straight edge on a tiny, tiny, tiny piece of dirt and causing us to have a false bad reading. Now, a job like this can be really intimidating and seem kind of scary, but it's actually pretty easy to do. The only tools that we're going to be using today are Scotch-Brite green scrubby pads, a really nice scraper, as well as WD-40. The folks at WD-40 reached out to me because they wanted to be part of this build. They sent me the WD-40 Trigger Pro can this is the non-aerosol can, which I really like for doing this job. And one final thing before we get started, don't forget your safety glasses, and this is a job that I really like to wear gloves for. Whenever a cylinder head comes off the car, these are gonna be really important steps to check. As you can see, all along the surface here of the block is dirt, debris, grime, and even leftover material from the head gasket. We need to make sure we get as much of that as we possibly can off so that we can accurately measure the straightness of the block. If we were to just put this on now, we might actually run into a spot where it's high because there's dirt and our feeler gauge measurement will not be accurate. So we need to get this as clean as we possibly can. This engine was out of a running vehicle. Obviously, you guys saw the white Wookiee drive before. So I'm not too worried about there being any warpage here. If you're concerned about warpage, it may be better just to go ahead and send the block to the machine shop, have it checked by them, and that way if they need to take any material off the block, they can go ahead and do it there. In addition to that, if you had an engine that was, say, consuming oil or had other problems, we may want to remove the pistons, rehone the cylinders, and clean it that way. But because this was a pretty good running engine, I just want to clean this carbon buildup on the tops of the pistons as well as back here in the combustion chambers. As you can see, the line that runs around this cylinder, where the clean spot stops, that small portion there is the combustion chamber. And if we leave a bunch of carbon buildup in that spot, that can lead to hot spotting when we get the engine put back together. This is also a really good opportunity to look at the cross hatching pattern in the cylinder walls. If you don't see this crossing, down in the cylinder walls where the piston rings ride, you are going to either want to send it to the machine shop and have them hone it, or get yourself a hone and hone your own cylinders. After inspecting each one of these cylinders, it seems that the cross hatching pattern is pretty good on all the cylinders, so I'm not going to send the block out to the machine shop. I'm also not going to be replacing the piston rings. If you have any question on integrity of pistons or cylinder walls or piston rings, this is the opportunity, this is the best time to get them replaced so that you don't run into an issue when you get the engine put back together. Even with all that, it's really worth spending a little bit of time to clean all of this out before doing that because we may find that these clean up really, really well and we don't have to worry at all about it or we may find that some of this stuff won't come out or some of this material from the, the head gasket won't loosen up and then we'll have to send it to the machine shop anyway. Like I mentioned, we're gonna be using WD-40 in order to remove the carbon from the block, from the cylinder walls, and from the tops of the pistons. I really like to use the non-aerosol Trigger Pro can for this. It gets a nice wide spray pattern without shooting any excess anywhere else, so it keeps it right on the block and on the piston surface. I like to give it a pre-treat and just let it sit for a minute or so. While I'm letting that sit, I actually like to cut these pads in half. They seem to go a little bit further when you cut them in half. Now it's up to you on where you wanna start, whether it's on the block surface or whether it's on the piston or cylinder wall. 
I like to kind of go back and forth between the block surface and the cylinder wall and piston. This scraper is a blue point scraper. It is one of the best scrapers I've ever used. I'll try and throw a link down in the video notes for you guys to check it out. One of the best parts is the tip is replaceable and I think this thing was only about 20 bucks, so I highly recommend it. Now our goal here is not to take metal off, right? So you don't need to apply much pressure when doing this. Simply a back and forth motion of the scraper does enough to remove most of the material. Now we're just trying to get the high spots here and we'll come back with the Scotch-Brite pad. If I were doing this at the dealership, I would actually use like a, a Rolock disc uh, with the, the green one or the yellow one with the fingers on it and just hit it with a, an air-powered whiz wheel. And that would do a really great job of cleaning all of this off. Fortunately, or well, I guess unfortunately at the house, uh, my air compressor doesn't really have enough juice to power that. So we're just gonna do this one by hand. But as you'll see, it doesn't really take much effort or much time to get it cleaned. While I mentioned that we want to do a really good job cleaning this so that we can take accurate deck measurements, we're not making microchips here. So if there's a spot here or there, I'm not gonna lose any sleep over it. I will say though, if you're trying to build like a thousand horsepower car, that might be a time where you really wanna send it to the machine shop anyway and have it perfect before you go back together with it. Hit it with another spray of WD. I'm also not gonna worry about getting any WD-40 down in the cooling jackets because all that's gonna get cleaned out once we have the engine on the stand. Now that we got the process started on the block surface, I'm gonna let that sit to help break up any more carbon. And I'm gonna start on the piston and cylinder wall. Kind of the same thing, give it a spray. It, you don't need a ton. And this is where elbow grease is really all you need. You do kind of want to be careful not to spend a ton of time scrubbing in one spot. That can lead to removing a little bit of the cross hatching. All you really need is some light pressure. Let the Scotch Brite and the WD do the work for you. You'll see our carbon starting to come up pretty easily. If there's any big chunks that you don't feel comfortable with, take a blue shop towel and just wipe them out. And even there with just a minute or so of scrubbing, you can see our piston here looks considerably different to how it looked before we started. If you need to rotate the engine around to get a little deeper into the cylinder wall, go ahead and do that. Every once in a while, I like to take these blue lint-free rags and just wipe it out and see how it looks. Now there may still be a little bit of discoloration here in the cylinder wall. That's not that big of a deal. We wanna get as much out of it as we can, but if there's a little bit of discoloration, that's probably going to be okay. Remember, this is the combustion chamber, not where the piston rides, so we just wanna make sure we get all the carbon off of it so that we don't create hot spots. I found that by cutting these in half, it actually, you can use about half of one per cylinder. I bought a six pack uh, for like five or six dollars. I like when you can use really affordable things to do work like this. Give this one final wipe down. There we go. Now, this little spot of discoloration here, if you wanted to work a little bit harder to get that out of there, I wouldn't fault you for it at all. But I think that's gonna do a really great job for our uh, engine refresh. Now, when you're done with each one, go ahead and give it a little spray, pat the WD-40 down on the cylinder wall, and on the piston, that's going to keep any moisture or water from getting in it. What I like to do also is after I finish, I'm gonna take some of these shop towels, I'm gonna set them over the top, and I'm just gonna spray a little bit of WD-40 on the towels to help even further prevent any evaporation and any moisture from getting in. Remember, WD-40 stands for water displacement, so this works really, really well in this application because it's not like it's gonna be two or three days before we put the head on. It may be a little while, so we wanna do everything we can to help protect the cylinder walls as well as the pistons. As we finish the cylinder, we're gonna to wanna to rotate the engine around in order to bring the next cylinder up to the top. And we basically continue with each cylinder till we're done with all six.
You'll know it's about time to replace the Scotch-Brite when you feel like you have to work a little bit harder than you did when you first started. So this one's about toast. Again, half of one of these lasts for about a whole cylinder. We'll go ahead and clean our final one. Now that we have all the cylinders and pistons clean, I'm gonna hit this towel with a little bit more WD-40 and just kind of wipe the cylinders out and make sure that there's plenty of WD on each one and each piston top, which we're gonna come back to this stuff all again anyway. This is not the last time we're touching these pistons before going back together with it. I've been letting that sit, obviously been spraying it from time to time with the WD. So we're gonna go ahead and take the scraper. Now, I mentioned the scraper, right? You don't wanna use it in the piston or in the cylinder. This is only gonna be for the head gasket surface. Again, light, light, light pressure with the scraper. You can see all this coming up right here is uh, leftover bits of the head gasket. This was a fiber head gasket on this car uh, from the factory. And when we go back together with it, we're going to be putting a metal head gasket on it. Now that we've got all the high points with the scraper, I'm gonna go ahead and finish the rest off with the Scotch-Brite, just like we did in the cylinder walls and on the piston tops. All right, so there we have it. All of our carbon is gone from our pistons and our cylinder walls and our head gasket surfaces. Now there are a couple of spots that didn't come perfectly clean, but remember this is not the last time we are going to be touching this surface. So before the head gasket goes on, we're going to be doing one final cleaning of all of this. This was just to make sure that we got an initial clean and to take our measurements with a straight edge and feeler gauge to be sure that the block's not warped. Now, I have yet to see a Volkswagen block warped even when the head gasket fails and the car's driven to the point of overheating and the heads are warped. I've never seen one of our blocks warped. These VR blocks are pretty dang strong, so I'm not too terribly worried about it. Now, because we're not going to be working on this right away and going back together with it, what I like to finally do Give it a little bit of a spray, lay some of these lint-free blue cloths over it. Give it one final spray down, and then just to be sure, and this also helps to prevent any dirt and nasties to get in it, we'll go ahead and lay our fender cover over and we are all done. All right guys, I'm gonna wrap it up there. If you have any questions or comments, hey, you know what to do. If you like the video, throw it a thumbs up on YouTube. I always appreciate that. You can also subscribe on YouTube or on the blog at humblemechanic.com. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, the blog, and of course on Snapchat. Hey, for more Wookie videos, be sure, be sure to subscribe. Also, huge shout out to the folks at WD-40. Thanks for helping sponsor this build. It's been a ton of help and I really appreciate it. All right, guys, hey, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.